Hi, my name is Margaret. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the array list. I'm going to start by declaring a variable of type array list. So here is my variable. I call it fruit because I'm going to store all kinds of fruit names. And it is an array list that stores string objects. I want to point out those angular brackets. They are the delimiters of the type parameter and my type string indicates that all my elements of the array list are of the type string. Array list is a class in package Java util. So I do need an import statement and I'm going to add that right here on top of my class. And at this point I'm going to compile. Compiles nicely. But it's not going to do anything yet. We only have a variable of type array list. We haven't created the array list object yet. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to um, assign a new array list. So at this point, I have a new ArrayList object. It is still empty, um, but we can print it out. And because ArrayList is a reference type, it has a toString method. Every, re every reference type in Java, and those are all types except for the eight primitive types. Every reference type in Java has a two string method which means it can be expressed as a string and so I can just pass them to my print line method and print line will print it for me so let's see how that looks like I say system out print line fruit and you can see here there are two rectangular brackets one opens, one closes, there is nothing in between. And the reason there is nothing in between is because my list is empty. And uh, Java uses those rectangular brackets as the delimiter to show me where my array list starts and ends. So if I add some elements, this will look different in a moment. So let's do that. I'm going to take my array list fruit and I'm going to add an apple. And I'm going to add a pear. And I'm going to add an orange. So let's compile and run again. And you can see apple, pear, orange. Every time I'm using my add method, it adds a new element at the very end of my list but maybe I want to add an element in a certain position, let's say right here between apple and pear, on position with the index one. And I can do that. I can say I would like to add another fruit, let's say a grape, and my index is one. That's where I would like to add my new grape. And now you can see apple, grape, pear, orange, grape is placed on index one. Everything else is pushed back. So uh, pear, which used to be index one, is now index two. So I can add either at the end by default or I can specify exactly on what index I would like to add my new element. I can print my array list. I can also remove an object. So at this point, I say I would like to remove, um, let's say, apple. And I'm going to compile and, and 
and run and you can see apple is no longer here we have grape we have pear we have orange grape was entered on index one but when we remove the apple everything was moved up so at this point grape is on index zero because we removed the apple at this point i want to briefly show you the java documentation of a real list i want to point out the angular brackets here in the middle you can see the uppercase e this is my type parameter e stands for element that could be any type except for the primitive types for example string maybe circle depending on what I want to store in my array list. For our fruit list, we use strings. And now I'm scrolling down here to the methods. You can, oops, I was a little bit too far. You can see the add method that takes one element of type E. In our case, E was a string, so we could add a name of a fruit. It gets added at the end, or if I want to pick a specific position, I can use this overloaded version where I'm adding an element on a specific index. I also want to introduce you to the contains method. So here is a method, it's called contains, and it allows me to check whether a certain object is included in my list. It returns a boolean, that means true or false, depending on whether the element is in my list. So let's go back to the code and let's check whether our list contains already kiwi. So here I see I have a boolean, I call it contains kiwi, and I'm going to assign the value of fruit dot contains kiwi. And I also want to print my result, so I say system out print f contain, oops, there should be s contains kiwi and I'm going to print out the value of contains kiwi so let's see what that is I'm going to compile and I can see that I say an L missing so let's do that again compile and run and it tells me contains kiwi false because we haven't added the kiwi yet. At this point, I want to add a few comments. So here I see adding elements, remove element, check whether. Uh, there are actually two methods that I can use. One is contains, right here, this method. And if I go back to my Java documentation, I will notice there is another method that is called index of. And what that does for me, it checks whether a element is on a specific index. And if it is found there, it returns the index as an integer variable. So we are going back, checking index off. So I see integer index of orange is fruit index of orange. And now we're going to print out the results as a system out print f index of orange. Now here that is a whole number. And we're going to compile and run. And let's make this uh, better visible. It tells me contains kiwi is false, but index of orange is two. And here, when it prints my list of fruit, I can convince myself zero, one, two, orange is on position two.
Now there's one last method I want to show you at this point. I'm going back to my Java documentation and it is called clear. And what, what clear does for me is the following. It removes all the element. It makes my list empty again. So we're going to try that out. I'm going back to my code and after printing my fruit list, I say fruit clear. And once again, I'm going to print my list. And when I compile and run, I can see at the very end, my list was once again empty because I cleared it. So this is all for now. See you next time.